around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. In this land of plenty, we occasionally forget that millions of less fortunate people elsewhere in the world are hungry, sick, destitute. But the three great religious faiths of our country, Protestant, Catholic, and Jewish, haven't forgotten. They conduct annual campaigns to help the needy overseas. Eighty percent of all volunteer aid is channeled through religious organizations here. Because of the scope of this great charitable work, United States government surplus food can be distributed at low cost. For example, one dollar will send more than 300 pounds of food abroad. But the money you contribute through your church or synagogue goes for more than food. It helps send clothing, bedding, and medicine, too. It goes toward the maintenance of hospitals and orphanages to initiate and carry out self-help and resettlement projects. During this month of Thanksgiving, keep faith with those in need overseas. Give through your faith. You sure you know what you're doing, Bertie? Yeah, I know. This here good enough place. Oh, Climb down. Don't make no sense to me leaving it here after all we've done to get it. Bring the shovel. Put your hand on some money and, and bury it. Don't make no sense at all. I'm going down there near the creek. Right there under these bushes. Place of any. All right. Start digging. Now listen, Berkey, you Chris, should... now you start digging. All right, all right. <laughs> Ain't gonna do us no good to have the money if they come take it off of us, is it? Well, no. No, it sure ain't. When we start spending any of it before the fuss dies down, they're going to be looking our way sure. Well, I wouldn't spend much of it, Oh, no. oh you would. Just enough to keep yourself liquored up till it was run clean through. Why, well, that ain't no We're going to lay low and dodge. And we're going to act like we've never seen more than six bits all together. Until they forget about that whole one. And then I'll make you a bargain, Crib. Oh, uh, what's that? I'll come dig up that gold myself. Yes, sir, you won't even have to touch a shovel. Oh, I won't mind doing the digging then. <laughs> All right, then get on with it now. I ain't hankering to spend another night in this prairie. I don't know why I'm going to do all the digging all the Sure, we'll be glad to get back to the Dodge this time, Mr. Dillon. You know something, Chester? You're always glad. Yes, sir, I know. It ain't so bad these long rides that we get something done, but to ride all that way for nothing. It wasn't for nothing, Chester. We at least found out that the holdup men weren't there. 
Oh, we did that. All right, we done that. We also found out that nobody don't know who they was nor where they went, if that's any help. Might be more help than some of the false leads we get sometimes. That could be true. Well, I do declare... Looky there, Mr. Dillon. What? Off to the right there. Just just look on. Yeah. Come on. By Jing, he don't look like no Indian. It doesn't look like he's got a horse. Long way from your horse, mister. Yes, sir, I am. As a matter of fact, I let him escape. You let him escape? I'm afraid that's exactly what happened. I'm not accustomed to horses. When I came back from the grave, the animal was gone. I guess I hadn't secured him properly. Grave? Just what grave was that? Why, an Indian grave back there a few miles where I picked up this fine specimen of a bow and arrow. Who are you? My name is Milford, sir. Otis Milford. I'm Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. You make it a habit to rob Indian graves? No, sir, I do not. I have great respect for the Indians. I study them, you might say. I'm writing a book on every phase of their culture and of this West. Once in a while, it's necessary, in the interest of science, to collect a certain article. You don't look as though you're very familiar with any culture out here on the plains. You're right, sir, I'm not. I have studied the Indians of the East. I've come to study the Indians of the West. Are you aiming at something with that arrow? Well, yes, sir, I was. I wanted to test it, you know, to compare the bow with the ones used by the Eastern tribes. It compares very well. I'm sure the Pawnee will be glad to hear that. I was just on my way to pick up the quarry. Are you shot something? Yes, sir, a rabbit. It's just over here. You shot a rabbit? You're either a very good shot or mighty lucky. Well, I've studied to become expert. Uh, well, where are you headed for now, Milford? I was heading for Dodge City before my horse ran off. Now we're headed for Dodge. We'll give you a ride in if you want it. Be much obliged, sir. Very much obliged. Sure. Uh, you can ride up behind me, Mr. Dillon. All right, Chester. Give him a hand. Thank you. Uh, be careful of the bow, please. Yeah, Chester. Be careful of the bow, please. All right, let's go. I hope supper's not spoiled, Jim. Sorry I'm late, but we're taking inventory. With a nagging backache I've had and sleepless nights it gives me, I'm all dragged out. You've been complaining of backache long enough. Don't you want to get relief? Of course. But how? Try Doan's pills. Right. Doan's pills are an analgesic and mild diuretic to the kidneys. Nagging backache, also headache, dizziness, and muscular aches and pains may come on with overexertion, emotional upsets, or everyday stress and strain. Doan's pain-relieving action is often the answer, and they also offer mild diuretic action through the kidneys. So if nagging backache is making you feel worn out, tired, and miserable, with restless, sleepless nights, don't wait. Try Doan's pills, used successfully by millions for over 60 years. See if they don't bring you the same welcome relief. Get Doan's pills today. To save money, buy Doan's big economy size. Very interesting. Yes, I was making note of that. Hey! Uh, Might I ask just what you think you're doing, Mr. Milford? 
Mr. Doby, this is all most interesting, very interesting. You ain't got no right to be going through them papers in my desk. Why, you're quite right, Mr. Doby. I suppose I should have asked you first. I don't allow prying, Mr. Milford. I wasn't prying, Mr. Doby. <laughs> I'd like to know what you call it. Going through them papers. I was merely going through the back registers, Mr. Doby, to see who had stayed here at the Dodge House in years past. That ain't any of your business, as far as I can see. It was in the spirit of pure research, Mr. Doby. I was just looking for more background material for my book. I don't care what you're looking for. I want you to get out of my office and stay out. Certainly, sir, if you feel that way about it, but I don't... No buts about it. You just get out, and I'll see that you stay out. I told him I wouldn't stand for it, Marshal Dillon. And I want you to see to it that it don't happen again. All right, Toby. All right, all right. Just calm down. Now, there wasn't anything missing, was there? Well, no, nothing was missing, but that's not the point. I just don't want him snooping around. Well, I don't think he'll bother you anymore, Toby. He's not a crook. Well, I'd like to know what you call it. Milford was doing just what he said he was, looking up material for his book. Uh, he just neglected to ask your permission. Probably never occurred to him. Well, I ain't going to stand for it. All right, all right. Then I'll talk to him. Well, that's a proper way to conduct your job, Marshal Dillon. Good day. Good day. Oh, oh. Dr. Adams, I, I didn't see you coming. Yes, well, they had better be more careful opening doors, Dobie. You, you might become a patient. <laughs> good day, Doctor. Yeah, good day. Uh, what's eating him? <laughs> Come on in, Doc. Yeah, he's upset because our friend Milford started looking through the hotel records without Dobie's say so. Oh, Milford. I should have met that fellow's bound to get himself into some real trouble. Milford's harmless, Doc. Oh, sure, he may be harmless to other people, but he's not harmless to himself. No? What do you mean? He just doesn't belong out in this country. I treated him for his limp, uh, you know, like you said. And I swear, Matt, I never saw such a pair of raw feet in my life. Why, he must have walked for miles. And his boots, well, that they didn't even fit. Oh, uh, granted, he's no frontiersman. I should true. say he isn't. And he's not making any friends around Dodge, either. No? What's he doing now? Well, Matt, it's nothing criminal, but he, he keeps stopping people and asking them fool questions. And, and he nearly got himself kicked in the head a little bit ago. Oh, what happened? Oh, he was trying to get a better look at the saddle of old man Garcia's horse. You know, it's got silver work on it, you know. And oh, he yeah. Was, yeah. Well, I don't blame him for looking. It's mighty rare in Dodge. Yeah. Well, Milford could have been killed. Yeah, yeah, he could. And he's talking now about starting off on a, an expedition in the Indian country. Well, then he will be killed. Well, I say, I'd give him about two days. All right, Doc, all right. I guess I better have a talk with him. Uh, I don't think it'll do much good. Well, maybe you can send him back to his eastern Indians. <laughs> I have a feeling they sent him out here. Come on, Doc, I'll buy you a beer. I didn't order, Matt. The food would have had to have been warmed up twice. I'm sorry I'm late, Kitty, but I've been looking for somebody. Mm, it's all right. Sit down. Oh, thanks, Kitty. I could stand some food, and I think... Um, uh, Kitty, maybe you better go ahead and order your dinner, huh? Huh? I'll be a little while yet. What is it now? Uh, that's who I've been looking for. Uh, you mean that little professor fellow? Yeah, that's the one. I want to talk to him before he gets into any more hot water. Before you eat? Yeah, I'm afraid so. All right, Marshal. Far be it for me to interfere with the processes of the law. Ah, no, Kitty. Oh, go on, Matt. I can pay for my own dinner. Just remember, you had your chance. I'll see you later. Sure, Matt. Sure. Can I see you for a minute, Mr. Milford? Oh, Marshal Dillon, sit down. Sit right down. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
May I offer you something? Some coffee? No, thank you. No, thanks. Uh, no, you, you go right on with your dinner. Oh, I've finished. Thank you. Well, what can I do for you, Marshal Dillon? Well, uh, I understand that uh, you're planning to head out on the high plains. Yes, sir. That's exactly what I plan to do. And you're going alone. Is that right? I always go alone, Marshal. It's the only way to do a true job of study. I don't think that's a good idea, Mr. Mulford. Well, I don't understand. I don't think it's safe for you to ride off out there alone. It's tough country. I'm not afraid, Marshal Dillon. Might be better if you were a little afraid. You weren't doing so well the last time when we found you. Well, I'm not going to try to ride a horse this time, Marshal. You're not going on foot. Now, Doc says you're lucky to have any feet at all. I think your doctor is somewhat of an alarmist. But no, Marshal, this time I'm taking a wagon. I'm going to be properly equipped. Equipment isn't the whole answer, Mr. Milford. A man who doesn't know the prairie stands a good chance of not getting back. I'll know the prairies when I get back. I promise you that. Well, the Indians might not be too glad to see you either. I happen to be a friend of the Indian, Marshal Dillon. Yeah, but you might not get a chance to prove it. They can be dangerous, you know. I certainly appreciate your interest, Marshal, but a man must pursue his calling. You can't legally argue with that, can you? No, and I can't legally stop you, but I can warn you. And I won't legally be responsible for what might happen to you. I understand your position, Marshal. I hope you can understand mine. (sighs) Yeah, I can understand it. But I don't like it. This is Dennis James. Say, remember way back when this melody was popular? There's something very special about a long-time favorite, isn't there? Well, folks feel the same way about one of Kellogg's favorites, Kellogg's All Brand. Going on 41 years now, it's been America's most popular good food way to fight irregularity from lack of bulk. Because it's whole bran, Kellogg's All Brand gentles away irregularity safely and reliably. And because it's deep toasted for extra crispness, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. That's A double L hyphen B R A N. Kellogg's All Brand. All right, Mr. Ross, if you say I need beans, beans it is. Well, it ain't proper to go nowhere in this country without a supply of beans, and that's the truth. <laughs> Now, uh, what else will you be needing? Oh. Uh, I'll be with you in a minute, mister. All right. Let's see, now, I have a blanket and a kettle and salt and... Oh, yes, I need a shovel. All right. Uh-huh. Uh, long-handled or short? Now, you might advise me about that, Mr. Ross. I want it for digging... Well, you might call it treasure. Yes, it might be Treasure. Hey, I won't be much longer, mister. I can wait on you soon. Never mind. You must have been in a big hurry. Sure, I hate to lose a customer. Well, I have taken a lot of time. Well, you're buying a lot of goods. Uh, let's see. Here's the shovel. That looks all right to you. I should think that would do nicely, Mr. Ross. Now, if you'll just help me get these things in the wagon. Um, uh, are you going to pay now? Or later. Oh, forgive me. I forgot. I'll pay now. Uh, how much does it come to, Mr. Ross? Yeah, now, let's see. It's $1.25 for the beans. Uh, 
That's a dollar, three forty for the blanket, two dollars for the shovel. I'll come to you. Uh, seven dollars and sixty-five cents. Seven sixty-five. Mm-hmm. There you are. Seven dollars and sixty-five. Now, right, well, uh, let me give you a hand down to the wagon with all this. <laughs> yourself a drink. There ain't time, I tell you. You got a lot of time. You get them shells I sent you. That's all that I've been trying to tell you. I didn't wait around. I told you it wasn't no good. Told me what wasn't no good. Burying the gold like that. Crab, come on and talk straight, will you? I seen the fellow who said he was heading out to dig it up. You seen the... What fellow? I don't know who he was. Don't make no difference. He was buying a shovel and he said he was going to dig it up. You sure... Well, I was right there. It wasn't I, and I heard him. He's starting out in the wagon, and he's going to dig. I told you it wasn't no good. Oh, shut up. Come on. Something on your mind? Oh, uh, nothing that you're going to help me with. That's plain to say. Oh, what do you mean? Well, they tell me Milford started out west. Yeah, Doc, I'm afraid he did. Uh, I thought you were going to talk to him. I did talk to him. Didn't do any good. Uh, Obviously. What do you want me to do, Doc? Lock him up? It might not have been a bad idea. Now, listen, Doc, I've had... Mr. Dillon! Mr. Dillon! All right, Chester, I hear you. Here I am. Hello, Doc. Excuse me for interrupting, but I got something to tell yes, Mr. Dillon. Go ahead. Interrupt. Interrupt. Oh, what is it, Mr. Mr. Dillon, that fella has went and done it again. What fella? Th- that Milford fella. Well, where is he now? That's just it, Mr. Dillon. They ain't hiding her hair of him. Hiding her hair of him where, Chester? Out there. Where his wagon turned all right, over there? All right, Chester. Start from the beginning. Where is the wagon? Well, sir... Luke Myers was riding into town, see? And, and when he got about a mile or so from Crawdad Creek, he seen this wagon turn clean over on its side. Yeah. Oh, the team was in terrible shape. Thrashing around, carrying on, so he cut them loose. Well, how do you know it was Milford's wagon? Uh, yeah. Well, because Luke looked around there some, and he found one of them little notebooks Mr. Milford's always carrying around with him and writing in and had his name on it. And no sign of Milford? Not a sign in the world. Oh, that doesn't look good, Matt. No, Doc, it doesn't. You better get the horses, Chester. We'll have to go out there and take a look around. There it is, Miss Dillon. Smack on its side. Yeah. Rain around here. No sign of a struggle either. You mean he wasn't carried off? No, it doesn't look like it. it looks like somebody carried some stuff off in the wagon on it. Still ain't much left. He may have taken it himself. Well, no, look I Look there. Don't... Look there, Chester. What? Look like fresh footprints, don't they, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Let's see where they lead. Looks like they're heading for the creek, don't it? All right, we'll leave the horses here, Chester. Go down through the bushes. Yes, sir. What do you suppose he'd be after down here? Now, there's no telling, Chester. He's a hard one to figure. If it's really Milford we're tracking. Well, yeah, he's sure. Listen to that, Mr. Jones. Yeah. Come on. Be quiet. Yes, sir. You gentlemen are wrong. You're dead wrong. Looks like it's a me, mister. Looks like you were digging in the wrong spot. 
I'm not digging in any particular spot. I'm carrying on a scientific investigation. Oh, I told you, Bert, he's digging for the loot. But he ain't gonna do no more digging at all. Now, you men pay attention. Pay attention? I don't know anything about any loot. If I did, I wouldn't care about it. I'm digging for signs of a lost civilization. Oh. Artifacts that might be buried in this area. You're close to being buried yourself, mister. But those guns... Now, you're certainly not going to kill me. I don't believe it. You believe it? You cover the farthest one, Chester, when I start. Yes, sir. And easy, man. No. no. All right, drop your gun. Hey, Berkey. Hey. You got him, Mr. Duke. Hey. Chester. He ain't moving none, Marshal. Now, you stand still or I'll throw another bullet into your friend there. I'm backing out of here, slow and easy. Hmm? Ah! Nice shooting, Mr. Milford. I, I never aimed an arrow at a human being before. Sorry I had to. Yeah, but I'm glad you knew how. Chester. Chester, you all right? No. It's all right, Chester. It's all over. You got a crease in your head, Chester. It's a good thing you got a thick skull. Yes, sir. But... Mr. Milford, did they hurt that little Mr. Milford? No, Chester, they didn't hurt him. Oh, that's good. I've been worrying about him. Oh, you don't need to worry anymore, Chester. He just saved your life. He saved me. How could that be? Never mind. I'll tell you when you feel better. May I just say one thing, Marshal Dillon? What's that? It isn't always the Indians who are dangerous, is it? No, sir, you're right. It isn't always the Indians. Remember on past Thanksgiving days when your husband was all poised and set to carve the turkey? Remember the wonderfully perplexed expression on his face, on everyone's face? Remember how you thought what wonderful pictures this would make? Well, this year, don't be caught with an empty flash gun. Now, today, get a pack of Sylvania Blue Dot flash bulbs so you'll be prepared. Only with flash can you capture moments like this at their best, so quickly, so easily, anytime, anywhere. What's more... Sylvania Blue Dots, the world's largest selling brand, work with any film with any camera. And by the way, right now your dealer is making a special holiday offer. With the purchase of just one pack of Sylvania Blue Dots, he'll give you a free copy of Sylvania's new flash guidebook called It's Easy to Take Better Flash Pictures. It's a 32-page, lavishly illustrated book that will help you take the best pictures ever. So remember, this Thanksgiving, don't be caught with an empty flash gun. Pick up your Sylvania Blue Dot flashbulbs today. <laughs> 